the Dow Jones dropped over 500 points today, uh, erasing all of the gains from yesterday, and actually, and some. Um, and it's crazy that uh, we're down 2,000 points in the last last few weeks in the Dow Jones, and at the same time, gold is just surging out of its mind, and silver as well. Uh, gold and silver were both up huge today, um, which basically went the opposite direction of the Dow. Uh, the Dow lost over fi you know 520 points, and uh, gold went up over $1,800. And uh, silver's up as well. Silver actually outperformed gold today uh, as a percentage, um, but it's pretty much back to where it, it started this week. So silver's actually pretty much flat this week, um, while gold's just out of its mind surging. Um, it's actually kind of interesting because if you look uh, back at 2008 when we had a, a week similar to this with the stock market going up and going down, uh, silver fell. I think it was from like $21 uh, an ounce to $9. So, I mean, huge drop and gold took off. So now here we are kind of seeing that same thing a couple years later again with the, uh, with the stock market and gold surging again and silver is not plummeting this time. It's actually staying flat. So it's actually probably a positive sign for silver, but it's just kind of interesting. Um, and, you know, there's a couple reasons why silver is not always going to mirror gold. I mean, the two markets usually kind of do kind of mirror each other um, as they're, you know, the the two precious metals that have been money since the beginning of time. But a um, couple things that set that set silver apart from gold. Gold has no intrinsic value. I mean, it's just a pretty shiny metal. It's, it's really not used for anything. Silver is actually used a lot um, for industrial uses. Um, and also there's a lot of, of paper trading that goes on uh, with silver. So... Um, some of the uh, vol volatility that we see with silver is because of, of the fact of how uh, entwined it is with the sil with the stock market um, as, as far as the, the shares of, of paper silver now. Um, and I strongly invest uh, investing in silver. Silver you can actually see, you can actually get the shiny stuff for yourself. But uh, my point is the markets do uh, weigh heavily on, on spot price of silver. Um, however, over time, they, they gold and silver pretty much do the same thing. Um, so it's crazy this week. I said it was going to be crazy uh, after the U.S. credit rating was downgraded last week for the first time ever, and it, and it has been crazy. It's been uh, super volatile in the stock market, super volatile with precious metals as well. Um, and, but it's just been crazy, and, and it's funny. I was just watching um, a, a great blog, Silver Futurist. Uh, shout out to you. Um, he has a silver blog, and he was talking about how the mainstream media... Uh, back last year was saying that, that gold was going to tank and how you know we, we really can't rely on our media anymore and you really need to seek good alternate media. Um, they were saying that they actually quoted on the CNN article saying that, that gold was going to drop to $900 in 2011. So like he pointed out, you know, unless it, uh, unless gold, the value of gold's cut in half in the next couple months, that's probably not going to happen. So it was pretty ridiculous. But anyways, um, it, it looks to, to keep being an interesting week. Uh, the Bernanke came out yesterday, Ben Bernanke, uh, with the Federal Reserve news, and that's that's why the Dow Jones went up, you know, yesterday like it did, surged up, was, you know, and, you know, and I think it's interesting that, that the Bernanke can say something and the Dow Jones shoots up, but, um, you know, way higher than it does, you know, on, on a good jobs report or something like that. Um, which, which, by the way, we're not seeing any good jobs reports. Those are all looking really negative right now. So it's, uh, you know, obviously indicators that the economy's not getting any better and that, um, you know, gold and silver precious models are going to keep rising. But, you know, I thought it was kind of an indicator, too, and I wanted to touch on that yesterday. Uh, the Bernanke, he came out and they, he said, they said they were going to leave interest rates at all-time lows near zero through 2013. And uh, that shot up the stock market, but then it erased today. And it's almost like investors are catching on to the fact that, you know, the Bernanke and the Federal Reserve and the central banks, they don't really have a clue either. Because if they did, you know, the, we probably wouldn't be in the, a situation like we are in right now. Um, that is unless you're a conspiracy theorist and subscribe to the th theory that they're just taking back all the models right now and they control the expansion and the collapse of, of every economy, which, you know, I think there's a lot of truth to, to some of those arguments. But that's uh, that's for another show. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. We'll check you out soon. See what happens the rest of the week.